What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today. My name's Lee and this is the X-T3 review. You guys have been asking for it for a long time and I've been holding out because there was supposed to be a firmware update coming out in December. As of today, it hasn't come out yet, but it'll probably come out when this video goes live. But anyway, we're gonna take a look at the X-T3. Uh, if you haven't watched my hands-on first impressions with the camera, uh, I made a video at the X-T3 launch event. You can check that in the card up here or I'll put a link in the description, but I really wish you guys could watch that video because it actually covers a lot of the handling and a lot of things about this camera that I'm not really going to talk about in this review. And the other cool thing is the entire thing was shot on the X-T3 so it's basically all image samples and video from this camera and it kind of gives you a good idea of what it's like in a run and gun situation. For the people that haven't watched this video, we're going to briefly go over the main specs and take a look at image quality, low light performance and autofocus because those are some of the things that I didn't really focus on too much in my hands on first impressions because I didn't really want to make any bold statements until I actually got more use with the camera. But first let's get into the specs. It's a 26 megapixel X trans 4 sensor. It's a backside illuminated sensor so that's really cool. Has a base ISO of 160 versus uh, the X-T2 which was 200. Has 425 phase detect autofocus points across the entire sensor. It has high speed continuous shooting of 11 frames per second with the mechanical shutter. 20 frames per second with the electronic shutter all the way up to 30 frames per second with the electronic shutter which is just insane. It has 4K video right up to 60 frames per second and you can actually shoot at 400 megabits per second uh, H.265 and it'll do 120 frames per second in 1080p. It has dual UHS-2 card slots as well as a mic jack, headphone jack, USB type C and micro HDMI on the left hand side. And that's basically all the specs I wanna get into for now. So as I said, let's take a look at some image quality here and we'll just kind of pop some images up. Uh, I did a portrait session. I've done a couple portrait sessions. As you know, as I'm a portrait photographer and we did an editorial shoot with this camera. So I'm gonna be popping images up throughout this video as I talk. But I really love this camera. I love shooting with it. It's everything I love about the X-T2 but with like way more horsepower and way more video features and really good autofocus. I'm gonna be comparing it to the X-T2 quite a bit because I think that Fuji set the bar really high with that camera. I have loved shooting with Fuji cameras. It's just an experience that you don't get with many other cameras. The menus are intuitive and they haven't really changed the actual button layout on this camera versus the X-T2. They did make the AFL button, the AEL button, the trash can and play buttons a little bit bigger so they're easier to hit. But other than that, this camera feels almost identical in the hand. Except for if you actually get the booster grip for the X-T3, on the left here you can see it's quite a bit chunkier. Uh, the profile of the grip is thicker. I also noticed that it says made in Japan on the X-T2, where it doesn't say that on the X-T3 because it's made in China. When it comes to image quality, which is super important in a camera, uh, this camera really only has two more megapixels more than the 24 megapixel X-T2, but I feel like this camera has basically the same soul, same something special that the X-T2 has. And I don't know if it's the film simulations, I don't know if it's the glass, but uh, I just love the images coming off this camera. But I think the big thing a lot of people were kind of interested in is definitely the low light performance, the high ISO performance. Um, since this is a BSI sensor, it's a backside illuminated sensor, it is supposed to be better in low light. So let's jump into Lightroom and kind of compare it to the X-T2 uh, with some high ISO samples. All right, so jumping into Lightroom here, just to take a look at the noise levels, and I'm gonna compare this to the X-T2 because the X-T3 here on the right, uh, you can tell by the dimensions, it's a little bit bigger because it's 26 megapixels, and it's also the BSI sensor that's in the X-T3, which is supposed to give it improved dynamic range and low light ability. But if we look here at ISO 1600, I can't really tell the difference between the noise levels here. And this kind of continues throughout all the way up to 12,800. I'm gonna skip a couple here and we're gonna go right up to 6400 ISO, zooming in here. Noise levels are there, but they're not that bad. You also gotta remember we're looking at the raw files here. Uh, there might be a little bit more sharpness on the X-T3, but that's only because of the higher megapixels. But the noise levels look pretty much identical. Now bumping up to ISO 12,800, we punch in here. Uh, again, sharpness is pretty much the same. Noise levels look almost exactly the same. Um, I'm not really seeing a difference with that new BSI sensor as far as low light capabilities. Uh, the noise looks almost identical. Now we're gonna go right up to 25,600 and the noise is getting pretty heavy here. I would say that they're almost exactly the same. I, I honestly can't tell the difference between noise levels. If you look at this here, we've got the X-T3 on the right and the X-T2 on the left. I honestly cannot see any major improvement in low light capabilities. 
and even taking a look at dynamic range I was not able to really tell a difference but when you're zoomed out you're not zoomed in that close it actually handles low light pretty well and I mean that the same goes for the X-T2 as well. Alright so that's slightly unimpressive uh, it's not what I expected and it's also why I didn't really make any comments on it in my hands-on impressions video because uh, I wasn't able to look at the raw files and I saw other reviewers out there commenting on how the ISO performance is better with this camera only looking at the JPEGs and when you are shooting JPEG even with the noise reduction turned down there's still processing going on you're not looking at the actual file so Taking a look at it with the raw files and not seeing literally any performance, real world performance against the X-T2 is kind of disappointing, but uh, I guess we get those extra two megapixels. If you want to take a look at the raw files, I'll put them in the description. You can download those and look at them for yourself. But the biggest obvious improvement that I noticed is definitely low light autofocus. So this camera, Fuji Sang, can do right down to negative three EV. Uh, the X-T2 was only negative one. And so taking a look at the low light autofocus performance, I wanted to do some tests with the 56 millimeter because this is the slowest, one of the slowest autofocusing lenses that Fuji has. So I wanted to see if this camera can speed it up a little bit. So let's take a look at that. So yeah, there definitely was a big improvement in the autofocus and the light. We did see that the X-T3 was a little bit faster than the X-T2. Uh, it turns this 56 millimeter into a little bit snappier of a lens, which is nice to see. Even with the 56 millimeter on it, it's a really good experience shooting and getting focus with this camera. Now it comes to continuous autofocus tracking. Didn't really see a huge improvement over the X-T2. They've improved the autofocus system so much in that camera. I am assuming that with firmware updates, this camera is going to be quite a bit better. Uh, where I did notice it was a little bit better was at like 11 frames per second continuous shooting, right up to 20 frames per second and 30 frames continuous shooting. Uh, if you took a look at my X-T3 launch event video where uh, we were shooting supercars, uh, this thing was locking on really well and I was using the 200 millimeter F2 and uh, that paired with this camera was just a sniper. Fuji's included all the same uh, continuous autofocus custom settings, so multi-purpose or ignore obstacles and track subject and stuff like that. Uh, you can go in and dial those in for yourself if you want to. Uh, Fuji's saying some of their biggest improvements is definitely face detection and eye detection continuous autofocus. I actually don't think the X-T2 can do continuous autofocus eye detection, but basically with the X-T3, you hit the function button up top here and you can select eye detection, face detection, you can set which priority of eye you want it to focus on. But basically I found that it worked pretty good. Uh, the UI was kind of laggy, so like when the focus box is following the face or the eye, it's like six or seven frames behind the actual uh, person's face, which is kind of weird, but I did find that the images were in focus. Uh, I don't know if with firmware updates they can actually improve that with the UI and like the focus box. Uh, it kind of gives you kind of an uneasy feeling that maybe the focus isn't actually connecting with the eye, but uh, it was actually connecting with the eye. Again, firmware updates can maybe speed that up an improvement, but I don't really think it's like the a7 III where the focus box locks onto the eye and follows it without any lag at all. I would say that I can't fully trust the face detection and eye detection on this like I could with the Sony a7 III. Now back to high speed shooting, the 11 frames per second, 20 frames per second and 30 frames per second. The 30 frames per second shooting is awesome. Uh, it is with a crop at 1.25 times and it will give you a 16 megapixel file. But if you are a sports shooter, think of the possibilities. 30 frames per second is a lot of stuff to capture. And the crazy thing is it does it without a blackout. So you get those high speed shooting options with no blackout. Um, it's even awesome just for like doing fashion photography and stuff like that. Again, there is a crop, but if you're shooting 20 frames per second, you can decide whether you want to shoot that with a crop or without the crop. The only bad thing I noticed is that there was some rolling shutter uh, in the vertical lines. You can actually see some bending and stuff like that with the rolling shutter. And uh, it's kind of to be expected with a camera that's shooting 30 frames per second. And if you want to avoid that, you got to shoot with the mechanical shutter. Also, another thing I noticed while I was shooting those high speed frame rates is that all the info goes off the screen when you're shooting it. So it's kind of like you're shooting a video. You kind of see a blinking light in the corner when you're capturing those images. 
but it kind of gets rid of all your information, like your settings and your light meter and stuff like that until you let back off. All right, so enough about that and the autofocus and stuff. If you wanna take a look at more of that, you can check out my hands-on impressions video. I didn't really do too much other high-speed continuous tests other than at the racetrack. But let's take a look at the thing that a lot of you guys wanna know about, and that's the video features of the X-T3. And I don't think there's anything on the market besides the GH5 that has the same features packed into that camera for that price and what it can do. It has beautiful 4K video. It's shooting 6K image, downsampled to 4K, and uh, I don't think anything other than the GH5 looks as good as this. You can shoot 10-bit internal 420 or through the external HDMI at 422, so you get more color information and you can record to other codecs like ProRes on like the Ninja 5. But you can actually shoot H.265 4K 24 frames per second up to 400 megabits per second on this camera. And some computers can't really play back the H.265 video that well. If you have a newer computer, uh, you might not have any problems. I didn't have any problems playing this back, but I know that some people are. But you also have the option of shooting H.264. You just can't shoot up at that higher bit rate. Now I heard there is a firmware update coming out and that's the firmware update that I was hoping was gonna be out for this video. Uh, and they're saying you'll be able to shoot at 400 megabits per second at H.264. So that might help some people out with an older computer. Some people mentioned in my hands-on first impressions video that uh, there was a lot of banding in the image and that was when I was just shooting the stuff where I was talking to the camera and I was shooting F-Log and I was shooting 10-bit at the highest bit rate. But the thing is, there is no banding. This camera doesn't really have much banding and you shouldn't really get much banding with 10-bit video. So just as an example, I've got the clip loaded up here into Premiere, you can see, uh, right click on this, we go to properties, you can see this is the uh, HEVC 10-bit 420. This was shot in F-Log, so this is basically the highest you can shoot at for this without going through the external. And basically all I did was I put the Fuji Eternal LUT. So we'll go to customize and we're gonna put the Eternal LUT on. And as you can see, the highlights are a little blown. It's a little bit too contrasty. So I brought the exposure back and then I adjusted the highlights. And then I think I warmed it up a bit. And if I toggle that on and off, you can kind of see the type of dynamic range we're playing with here. Uh, it's really robust codec, works really well. Some computers might have problems playing it back, but uh, mine doesn't have a problem. So I already mentioned the frame rates. This camera will do 4K 60, and it'll do 1080p at 120 frames per second. And the cool thing with the 120 frames per second is that there is no line skipping or binning or anything. Fuji told me it's straight sensor readout, and that's awesome because comparing the 120 frames per second off this camera to something like the a7 III, uh, this looks awesome. It definitely looks better than the X-H1's 120 FPS, so if you're wondering about that, this camera has a really nice 120 frames per second. You can use all the film simulations as well as the turn of picture profile. They added that with this camera. And again, I mentioned you can shoot F-Log with this camera so you can shoot log. And one other cool thing for hybrid shooters is that you can have separate video settings from photo settings. So if you're using the silent shooting mode, you can have your shutter speed set to 1 of a second for 24 frames per second. And when you switch into photography, that shutter speed would be too slow. You'd get motion blur. So for your photo side, you could have your shutter speed at uh, 1 250th of a second and just have your ISO bumped up or whatever. And basically you can toggle back and forth and have your exact video settings and your exact photo settings. So for hybrid shooters, that's really nice to have. Now, one thing I can't show you, uh, Fuji has said they're gonna be adding to this camera is HLG. So being able to shoot HDR video with this thing, Again, that's coming out in firmware version two, and I was hoping I'd be able to show you guys some samples, but I'll probably have to make another video on that. And one other cool thing with that firmware update is right now, this is one of the main reasons why I hate shooting video with Fuji, but basically every four gigabytes while you're shooting video, it makes a new separate video file. So say you were shooting a 20 minute video like this, there would be like tons of video clips that you have to bring into post and drop them all in, which is super annoying. It's not just one big video file. But with the firmware update, they're gonna eliminate that and you will be getting you know, your max video size. So right up to 30 minutes, you'll be able to have a full clip. The autofocus and video is pretty good on this camera. It's not as good as Sony and it's definitely not as good as Canon, but it's definitely pretty good. The problem is it comes down to the type of lens you're using with it. Um, I found that the 16 to 55 is really good. So a lot of my video test samples that I'm showing here were 16 to 55. If you're using something like the Fuji 56 millimeter, you're gonna have a completely different experience and the autofocus won't be that good. That said, they've included all the custom autofocus settings in video, so you can set your tracking sensitivity and speed, which is in the X-H1. 
And that's really nice to have because then you can set it to like a slower focus so it's not so jumpy and it kind of gives you more of a natural focus. And they've also included face and eye detection in the video as well, which is pretty cool. So let's take a look at that. All right, so it wouldn't be a proper review if I didn't talk about the things I didn't like about this camera, which is a very small list, to be honest. Basically, it just comes down to the poor battery life. The battery in this camera is terrible. Would have been nice to see them uh, include a new battery with this camera, but it's not. It's the same old battery from the X-T2 and the X-H1, which also has poor battery life. And so you're not gonna get that much time out of if you're shooting 4K 60 frames per second, you're gonna get like 45 minutes out of the battery. If you're shooting something like just regular 4K 24 frames per second or 1080p video, you'll probably get an hour out of it, but that's still not that great. I guess the upside is that you actually have a USB-C port on the side that you can actually power the camera off with a battery bank. And so if you wanted to go that way, you could. Other than that, there's not too much bad to say about the X-T3. It's got an awesome EVF, 3.6 million dots. It's got a really nice screen. The buttons are tactile. It's everything that the X-T2 had uh, with the better EVF. You've got a locking diopter on it this time and slightly bigger buttons on the back. It definitely has the best focus peaking out of any camera I've used. Um, I really love the focus peak in this camera. You have linear focus that you can set the uh, focus by wire lenses to, which allows it to work more like kind of a mechanical lens, being able to turn your focus and it not jumping. Uh, the cool thing is you don't have to use the booster grip on this. You actually get a headphone jack built into the camera. And the other cool thing is you can actually take the door off the side of the camera and you have access to all your ports. So if you had it in kind of like a cage or a rig, you'd be able to plug everything in without this door getting in the way. And one other thing I'd like to mention, which I haven't talked about yet, is rolling shutter. There's very little rolling shutter on this camera and it's definitely because of the new sensor and the processor, the quad core processor in it. All in all, it's a really great camera. It's packed full of features. And for the price of $14.99, that's insane. Like I said, there's not much out there that can do what this does. Uh, and it's gonna be like that right up through into 2019 as far as I'm concerned. And with the firmware updates that Fuji comes out with this camera, we'll get more features and it'll just get better over time. Anyway, if you think about buying the X-T3, I'll put links down in the description where to find that. And uh, yeah, if you haven't watched the first hands-on impressions video of this camera, uh, I'll put links in the description for that so you can check that out. I think it's good for you guys to watch that because it covers a few more things that I haven't mentioned in this video. And uh, yeah, that is it. I just talked for a really long time and uh, I hope you guys have made it this far. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. I'll see you in the next one.